What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are starting another build series of an SAB Goblin Raw. But this is a different Goblin Raw. This is a Kyle Stacy edition. So this is a three bladed Raw. And if anybody knows me, you know that I love three blades and the Raw series is my favorite helicopter. So huge thank you to David. Thank you for letting me build this model for you. Super excited. So we're gonna go over what we got here. We're running the Tariq edition X Nova motor. Hobbywing 200 amp ESC. The motor itself is the 550 kV shaft A. And then we, of course, have our torque program box. If you guys are running torque servos, highly recommend these. Awesome little device. Icon 2, of course. And we're running CLX servos, so or HLX Cs and HLX T. So Cs on the cyclic, T on the tail. And then, of course, we have our torque servo grommets. RC Pro connectors, so we are running the S6s, and then we have these little caps just to go over the batteries connectors. Uh, we're running SRXL2 as well as two DSMX satellites, so SRXL2 for telemetry. So we're going to go ahead and get the camera on a tripod, get this box open, and let's start this start build. with the tail push rod. So you can see I already marked it here and just used a magic marker, and that is for the aluminum to slide because we want to sand the carbon. And you're going to want 13 millimeters from the edge of here to the edge of this little push rod. So you can see we marked them at 13 millimeters. So I'm going to scuff these up. I'm going to scuff the carbon up, clean it with rubbing alcohol, and then mix up some 30 minute epoxy. And let's get this glue Some together. 120 grit paper, roughed up the ends. We also roughed up the little push rods going in. And we scratch up the inside of our little sleeve caps. Cleaned everything with rubbing alcohol. Both ends are done the same way, cleaned off good. So now we're gonna grab our mixing cup and our 30 minute epoxy, mix it up and push this all now together. Now that we glued up our push rod, it's off in the back drying. You don't wanna touch it after you get done epoxying. So now we're gonna start on the transmission assembly. So I already went ahead and took off the little protection. So now you're going to need this little spacer. You're gonna slide that guy down there first, just like that, and then you're going to need your pulley. So now I already went ahead and used the one-way bearing SAB grease that they recommend. So I put some down in there and then I just take a toothpick and I just kind of like to push it and try to get it inside of the actual bearing. Of course, some of it's going to push out and that's okay. You just want to try to force it down in there and kind of just move it around. So then we're going to take and we, after we have our shim on, note the direction. So the side with the screws are going to go towards the flat side of the transmission assembly. So we are going to assemble this like this. Slide this guy up. And again, grease is going to push out. That is okay. Paper towel, wipe off the excess. It's okay if it gets a little grease inside of there because the bolt is a lock nut on the back and it's not that of Loctite. So now you're going to grab your shims. Now SAB in the manual tells you three shims. So we're going to take all three. There is three, there's four here. So we're going to take one away. We need three shims. We're going to slide three shims onto the shaft. So there's one and this is two and three. Then we're going to grab our tail pulley and we are just going to line up the screw hole. So we want the hole to go up. So that way we can know that the recess of this pulley, our lock nut's going to slide down in there and the head of our screw is going to go there. So we're just gonna slide this guy together like this and check the hole. Now, after we get the screw in, we're gonna check for play. So let's just go ahead and slide the screw in, just like this, just so we can get it to kind of go through here. And you might have to use a driver to finish putting it all the way through. Cause it's going to be tight with the three shims. So we know now that we have the screw all the way through here like this. And just before tightening up, check, zero play zero play now go ahead and put your lock nut on the back here get your lock nut started and just kind of hold it there until it goes into its little groove right there and then tighten this all the way down it's a three millimeter driver crank it down hard and double check that the actual screw goes through the lock nut it's right at the edge so that way if the locking nut can do its job double check again for play nothing on either gear and everything spins freely. So now we need to grab our front servo assembly and our little anti-rotation bracket that slides in here. We're gonna line this up. Now pay attention to the recessed holes here and the recessed holes here. That's the way it goes together. 
So you're gonna grab a two millimeter driver and the six millimeter long screw, of course, Loctite, go ahead and run all three screws down. So there's gonna be two at the top, one, two, and three. Should look like this when you're done. And then now we're gonna grab the M3 by eight millimeter screw on a two and a half millimeter driver. And we're gonna grab our transmission assembly and we want this part of the two bolt holes. So this is going to be the front of the transmission with the motor pulley. And we are going to just lay that guy here like this and we want it to sit down and it sits flush. It's cut out in the back and it's recessed to fit perfectly just like that. So now we're gonna grab our two and a half millimeter driver with our M3 by eight. And we're just going to run these screws down. There's gonna be two of them, one here and one where the driver is. Loctite, fully tightened up. So now all of our screws on the front servo bracket are done and Loctite. We're gonna flip the transmission assembly over and we're gonna see these two holes right here. These are for the back servo mount. So now you're gonna grab your back servo mount. You want the recessed area up flat side down. So this whole assembly is going to fit down into here like this. And then you're gonna hold that into place. You need a two and a half millimeter driver, Loctite your screw, and there's gonna be two of those. Run them all the way down, tighten them up. Now that we got those two screws done and Loctite, we're gonna grab the actual servo mount itself and we are going to run the two screws in with the beauty washers. Now remember this here is the front, this is the left side, this is the right side. So we want the cutout towards the right side of the model. It's a two millimeter driver with the beauty washer. And you are going to get that screw started just like this. And then you're gonna grab your next screw, flip this bracket over and put that screw in right there. Once you get both those screws Loctited down, this is what you will have. Your front servo mount, your rear servo mount, left side, right side, back and front. So that's the way that the little divot goes. Now let's install the servo. We're gonna go ahead and start getting our servos ready to go into our transmission assembly. So we need our servo arm. You can use your choice arms. I'm going with the aluminum. You can go with the plastic, whatever servos you're running. The important part is 18 millimeters from the center hole to your ball end. So I've done so many SAB builds with these specific arms. I know exactly what hole it's gonna be. And if you're running these torque metal arms, it's going to be this first hole. So you're gonna grab your one and a half millimeter driver and you're going to retaining compound, not Loctite, but retaining compound on the screw. Go ahead, run that screw in all the way in until it's tight. Lock it down. A little bit more retaining compound. Go ahead, put a dab on the end here. Grab your ball end, which is going to be this little guy right here. And you're going to get that started and go ahead and get that ready to go down. Grab a two millimeter driver and tighten that ball all the way up. And once you get it all the way tightened up, you can fully lock it down, tighten it all the way up. And now your servo ends are done. Do the same to all three of them. And then you're going to use your servo gauge. So on your rear servo, your arm is going to go just 90 degrees. Just simple, 90 degrees, you're good to go. On your front servos, you're gonna use this little gauge. And this little gauge is going to give you your mark of center. So you're gonna want this arm to be centered with this little gauge. So now if you're using torque servos, you can use the torque box, which is what I'm gonna use. Awesome little device. If you're not using torque servos, you can also just do it inside your FBL unit with sub. So now we went ahead, got all of our servo horns done. Everything's Loctite, retaining compound on the ball links. So now we're going to insert our servos into the mounts. So this is going to be the nose of the helicopter. So if you're looking at it from nose left and right, so we're gonna just start with one servo. Now we wanna take our torque grommets, these little servo grommets here. I get a question where to get these all the time. Heli Direct, just search torque servo washer and they will come up. They make them for full size, minis, experts, Fatabas, all of them. And they just give you a better grip. They go in the hole of the servo and keep it straight and centered. So now we're gonna take our servo screws with the carbon fiber plate. We already got Loctite on them. We're just gonna drop this whole assembly down into here. Now you don't need to use the plates. Like if you look here, the plate and the screw is not long enough. So we are going to just use screws and no plates. So we got the plate off. We're just running the screw. We're gonna do one at a time, just like this. And go ahead, get that screw started. You might have to wiggle that servo around for a second. Get that screw started. And before you lock that screw all the way down, 
just snug it and then go ahead and do your next one. So same thing, grommet goes into here, grab your screw, lock tight, and you do that for both servos. Got all three servos mounted, everything Loctited, torque washers installed, your back servo, this is going to be the right side of the model. Tail boom's gonna go over here, nose over here. So just note that your elevator servo or back servo, you want the servo horn facing this way and then your left and right servo. So now we can set this whole assembly aside and we're gonna grab our upper frame sides. So I already went ahead and cleaned these good with rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. You'll get a lot of carbon dust and you can also wet sand these edges if need be. These feel pretty good, but if you're gonna be running bare wires with no heat shrink or anything on them, I highly recommend wet sanding in a sink with underwater because carbon dust is not good for you. So we're going to grab our frame sides and we're gonna note, this is the front of the frame side right here. So this is going to be the nose of the helicopter. This is going to be the back of the helicopter. Now you will notice there is countersunk screw holes on both sides of the carbon. As of right now, these plates are a doesn't matter which way they go, but you need a left and a right. So just note that these with the little tabs here is the front. So we're gonna start assembling a left side. So we're gonna do a left side frame. We're gonna grab these little metal with the lock nuts. Now the, the part we're screwing in is without the lock nut. So we're gonna use Loctite, but the side with the lock nut, you don't use Loctite. So we're gonna go ahead and we want the big hole to go here and then secondary hole there so i like to just kind of hold it there for a second it's going to be a one and a half millimeter driver we need some loctite run that screw down like that, so and then as you tighten this up it will pretty much push if it's tight sometimes they're tight sometimes they're not this one fell right into place nice and perfectly so we're going to do the same on the next one again you're going to grab your one and a half millimeter driver grab a little bit of loctite just put yourself a dab on there grab your next little bracket and we're going to look at the manual and the next one is going to this hole down here so we want to line up at this hole here and these fit really nicely so there's no tightness there some of them are tight so just check that on your model go ahead lock that guy down just like that and then our last one is going to go right here like this Go ahead, run your screw in, and then we need to make a right We side. have a left side and a right side of the upper frame assembled, as you can see here. One's left, one's right. They're just mirrored opposite of each other. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab our left side. We are going to grab our transmission assembly here, and we are going to see what we need to do and what screw holes need to be put where. So if you look at this carbon tray, you're gonna have one, two, three, four. So these are the screw holes you're going to use on the left side of the helicopter you're not using this front you're only using one two and three as of right now so you're just going to simply lay it up into these four holes here but again we're only using three on the left and then we'll use four on the right side two and a half millimeter driver with your beauty ring and you're just going to screw one in here and you're just going to run down the line here and get all of these put in lock tight it down do three on this side and four on the other. So one, two, three, and then on the other side, you'll use the front hole as well. Both frame sides done here. As you can see, Loctite it down. Again, that one front on the left side of the frame does not go in yet. So now we're gonna set this assembly aside and we are going to grab our head block. So now, again, this is a KSE, so it is a three-bladed head and tail. So now they do come, these come assembled already out of the bag. I pulled uh, two screws out to double check and they are Loctited. So this is how they come. Now I don't know if they're all coming assembled or if you're buying the head block as an option, I don't know. But as it comes out of the bag, they are Loctited. If you wanna pull your screws, double check, add a drop of Loctite, a very good idea. So I did pull Loctite. Now they already came with micro lube inside of them. They're already pre-installed. What this is is a pin that goes through with a flat spot here and here and your feathering shaft has a hole in it that these pen rides through these two set screws lock this pin into place or regular screws lock this pin into place on the flat spot and your feathering shaft can go like this so first thing we're going to do is grab a little bit of micro lube on our finger here and of course we're going to grab our o-rings and we're just going to get this o-ring lubed up and we're going to slide this guy down into here and we're going to push that o-ring down we're gonna grab our head dampener, which is a Darlin dampener. 
little bit of micro lube and we want the ridged side flat we want the ridge side and flat side out so now be careful when doing this that you do not get any kind of grease micro lube anything in the shaft and then you're going to want to push this whole thing and now we're going to go down. ahead and grab our radius arms we got all three of our o-rings and dampeners and installed in the head block so now we're going to grab our retaining compound and our radius arm so we're going to do one of these at a time so you're going to take your retaining compound and we're just going to put a gentle bead around the actual flanged bearing don't need a lot and then we're going to just simply push the flanged bearing into this arm it'll snap into place a little bit of rubbing alcohol clean this off like this then you're going to grab this little spacer drop that guy down in there like that grab your next radius or radius bearing your flange bearing you're going to do a bead of retaining compound and you are going to slide that guy into here like this push it wipe off any excess retaining compound and then you're going to do the exact same to the other now that we got both of our radius arms done we're going to set one aside because we only need one right now so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to grab our radius arm and we want it so that the lip faces inward. So this is the way we are installing it. So you're going to grab your block. We want the recessed hole. We're going after this hole right here. So this arm's going to be like this. So we are going to slide this guy through here. We're going to grab this little shim here. You can see that little guy. We're going to slide that shim over little dab a bead of blue loctite and we are going to simply thread this onto here like this get it started and screw it down all the way in run it all the way down again you want the sab logo out this way go ahead tighten it all the way up want it to be free and smooth no grit no bind and then now the next step is going to be grabbing this flanged bearing and you're going to grab this two millimeter. This was a two and a half millimeter. This is a two millimeter. We're gonna put a bead of Loctite, just like so. And then we're gonna grab this little hex nut. It's a spacer arm. We are going to slide this screw through here. We're gonna grab this bearing. We're gonna slide this bearing onto here. Put another dab of Loctite because it looks like some of it got pushed out and I want to make sure we got a good bit of Loctite and you are going to tighten this up onto here like this. Go ahead and tighten this all the way down and crank it down. You can use a little pair, a little wrench or something to fully lock that down. Now let's go move on to the linkage assembly. I'm going to show you making one. We need to make three, but the other two will be the same. So now if you look at your linkage rod here and you, the shorter side is going to be a right-handed thread. This longer part is a left-handed thread. So what I personally do is I just slide a driver on. This is a one and a half and you're going to take your ball end or your link and I'm going to get it started. And remember, this is a left-handed thread. So you're going to grab your tool. It's a left-handed thread. You're going to screw this all the way down. And you want an overall of 75 to 76. So we're going to go about here just to see. Then we're going to grab our next side. This is going to be a right-handed thread. We're going to just do the first one by hand just to get it started. I like to push with a little bit of even pressure as I run this down. Then grab our tool and just go ahead, spin this guy all the way down. And then we're going to measure with a caliper and measure 75 millimeter from end to end so then you'll make two more just like it and we move so on we got all three done i made them to 75 and a half millimeters so right in between 75 76 so now all three of our linkages are done we're gonna set those guys aside we're gonna grab our head block back so on our head block here we're just gonna go ahead and lay a paper towel there because i got some micro lube on the shaft on the shafts uh we're going to grab the other radius arm which is this guy here and we are going to grab the two and a half millimeter driver and this little screw here. We're going to slide this guy together. We want the lip side to face inward. So we are just going to slide this into here. Get that little brass insert in there to line up. There we go. 
We're gonna grab a little washer shim, slide that guy on, blue Loctite, and we're just gonna run a bead of blue. Perfect. Then we're going to slide this thing together all at one time. So we're gonna slide this little arm onto here. We want SAB facing out. It's gonna push into that bearing. And then we're gonna grab the next bearing, which is gonna be another flange bearing, and it's gonna go right into here. And we are going to push this all together. And it can be a little bit tricky to get this little bearing now in. Now that we got that bearing popped into place, we're gonna grab this arm and we are going to assemble this together. So we want the lipped side to face that flanged bearing. So let's just go ahead, get this started. So just run it almost all the way down. And then we're gonna grab a two millimeter driver and this screw here. And again, Loctite, of course, we're gonna put a bead of Loctite. Let that run for a second. And then before we tighten this one up, we're gonna go ahead and lock this into place here. So just slide this guy through here. It's gonna slide through the bearing and go into that hex nut that we have on the other side or in between the two. Tighten those down and check and make sure this is still free. So tighten it down good. Remember SAB facing out and then grab your two and a half millimeter now and finish tightening this one up. Make sure everything is free and smooth. It might be a little tight, but as long as it's free and smooth, you are good to go. Now it is time to assemble our blade grips. I'm only gonna assemble one, and of course the other two will be identical. So I'm gonna show you one. So now these is a little different design. So we're gonna assemble on a driver. So we're gonna grab our very first washer, which is going to be the one that goes through the blade grip bolt, or the feathering shaft bolt. So imagine this is the head of the bolt, and then this is the washer. So we're gonna go washer, and then we're gonna go bearing, and then we're gonna go with the smaller, or with a shim, and then smaller ID, and then we're gonna go thrust bearing. Again, remember, open side out. We already preloaded. Larger ID, and then we're gonna slide this guy into here, like this, we're gonna drop this whole unit and assembly down. And we're gonna make sure that it is down, it is. And then we're gonna grab our head block here. And of course, I already got micro lube on the shafts and we're going to take a little bit of blue Loctite and I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite down inside the actual threads. Let that run through, and then of course, I'm going to blue Loctite the actual feathering shaft bolt. Before we drop the blade grip down, we're gonna grab another shim, and we are going to slide this guy down into here. A Little bit more micro lube on the shaft. So now we are going to slide this entire assembly down here, carefully and wiggling it down as we go. And then we're going to grab our feathering shaft bolt. We're going to drop it down. It's going to be a five millimeter Allen. Unfortunately, I don't have a driver, so I'm having to use a actual Allen wrench. And you're going to tighten down. So now you want to tighten this guy down good and tight. You want to snug it down as snug and as tight as you can get it without doing any damage. So now that should be tight, but it should be smooth and free. So now one blade grip is installed, Loctited, everything's good, torqued down. So now you're gonna go ahead and do the same to the other two. Now that we got the head completely assembled, everything is tight but smooth, which is what we want. So in the manual, it says after 20, about 20 flights, to check the preload. So they're talking about check if there's any play in the head. If there is any play in the head to shim it with a one or 0 0.2 millimeter shim. So we put a one millimeter shim in already, but if for whatever odd reason, there is any play in the head after 20 flights, shim it with that. So now we can set the head assembly off to the side for a second. We're gonna grab our arms and we're gonna grab our ball ends. So we're gonna put a dab of Loctite and those are just going to simply thread right into here. 
go ahead and snug these guys down. And then you're gonna grab a, that was a two millimeter. You're going to grab a three millimeter and your bolt. You're going to run a bead of Loctite down to here. Perfect. And grab this arm. You're gonna grab your blade grip here and you're gonna lay that just like this. Go ahead and get that screw started and tighten this all the way up. And then you're gonna do the same on the other two. Give it a good snug down. And then now move on to your other two blade grips. So go ahead now after your head's assembled and get your links on, remember SAB out and we want the shorter side to the top. So we're just going to Line this up, push those on, and you're going to do the same to all three of them. Short side to the top, SAB facing out. Get those in place and do the same on the last one. Short side on top, SAB facing out. Go ahead, get that guy lined up into place. Now let's grab the swash plate and grab your two millimeter driver and your ball. And you are going to simply just Thread all these into place and tighten them down. You're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then this anti-rotation pin, I would recommend leaving, not loctiting or screwing this guy down yet till we slide the swash plate on the mark. We got all of our balls loctited down. There's four on the upper swash and three on the lower swash. So your two servos, your two front servos, your back servo, and then your independent links to the blade grip. And this is your little fowler arm. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of micro lube and we are just going to put some micro lube on the main shaft. That we got our micro lube on our main shaft. Nice good coat of it. We are going to grab our swash plate and we're going to simply and carefully slide that guy down. And then I already went ahead and loctited the anti-rotation pen. So what I'm going to do is carefully slide it through here. Use my driver, make sure that I didn't rub the Loctite off. And I'm going to just push this through here, line it up, get it started. It's a one and a half millimeter driver and go ahead and fully tighten that down. I'm going to now grab our main head bolt, get it ready on a three millimeter driver. And I'm going to just take our head move the links out of the way. Just going to push this guy up and we're going to go through this side with the bolt so let's hold all of our grips up like this so that way we can have control of it and let's kind of just slide this thing down here so now what we want to do we want to slide our head assembly we want to find that hole there and with five hands we want to hold the frame hold the head and the bolt and we want to slide that through there now our head is not going to move Grab your lock nut, no need for Loctite or anything because of a locking nut. Go ahead and tighten that all the way down. We got that fully tightened down. We are going to rotate the head assembly until we see this recessed here. And we're gonna take one of our two and a half millimeter drivers, our smaller pinch bolts, Loctite added, and you are going to run that screw all the way down, tighten it fully up. And then you are going to take and you are good to now go. We got our head tightened down, bolted down. Everything's good. We got Loctite on our one. We got a lock nut on the other. We are going to simply find the straight ball on the swash plate. And I'm trying to do this laying down so you guys can see. And you're going to just pop this link on, which is not that easy. And you're going to run these links down here and Pay good attention, see how SAB is facing out. So this, we need to make a note on how you're doing this so they're all the same. So I'm gonna go right, which is going to extend it out. And we want to basically put a driver into here and we want to adjust this out a half a turn. So we're gonna go left, I was gonna tighten it up one half turn. So now go ahead and do the same on the other three or the other two. Now and we got our up. links on, our head is on. Just take a look at how freaking good that looks with the torque servos. Wow, such an awesome looking helicopter already.
So we're gonna go ahead and make up our links from the servo to the swash plate, which is going to be in this bag here. So let's get those we're made up. And made up our linkages from servo to swash plate. Very easy, self-explanatory thread, screw them together. I've done them on other SAB builds, they're all the same, 45 millimeters. Just note again, SAB out and SAB out. So your back servo is going to be just like this. So this SAB is gonna face out on the servo and then SAB faces out on the swash plate. And then your front linkages are gonna be a little different because you have to have them angle just a little bit. So again, 45 millimeters from end to end. I already made, went ahead and made up all three. I'm gonna get those on and then let's keep on moving so now on. we're gonna start on the tensioner assembly. So we're gonna grab our tensioner out of our bag 14. We're gonna go ahead and look at this guy here. We're gonna use retaining compound. We are going to slide this whole tensioner pulley down onto the actual screw. And sometimes that little tiny insert can be a pain. So you get the screw slid through. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more retaining compound since I pushed some off. And you're gonna add your little shim. That guy is gonna slide down there like that. And then you're gonna go to these inside holes right here. And we are just going to thread that all the way in. Tighten it down. Make sure that bearing is free and smooth. And then you're gonna go ahead and do the same on the next side, which is just gonna go right here onto that hole there. We're gonna grab the actual tensioner itself. We just assembled the bearings and idler pulleys, however you wanna call that. So now we're gonna grab the tensioner. Look at the lip side right here. We want that lip side to ride this bearing here. So now the bearing's the same on both sides or the little pulley is the same on both sides. So it doesn't matter which way this goes. But again, we're gonna slide this screw through here. We have two and a half millimeter driver. And we are going to use retaining compound just like on the other pulleys. Retaining compound on our threads. No shims or nothing needed lip side towards the actual bearing of the pulley. Go ahead and tighten this all the way down. Make sure it is free and smooth. Now we're gonna go ahead and assemble the tensioner spring. So we're gonna first grab our little spring here and we want the side, if you can see here, the side that's straight up and down is gonna go into this guy like this. And then the side that's curved is gonna go into the actual tensioner. We're gonna grab our screw. We're gonna slide that screw all the way down and we're gonna grab our tensioner itself. So now in the manual, they tell you to put it into the third hole. So they tell you that this spring goes in the third hole. Now you can move this spring through these different holes here to adjust the actual tension of the pulley. So someone commented on one video that I built at SAB and said, why did I put it in this hole, not this hole? You just, third hole is the place to start but you can move that spring and adjust with preload. So if you wanna adjust this this way or this way, that is up to you. So now that you can't do that though till after the model's assembled and you touch the tension, but I found that third hole works great. I'll quit rambling on it. So now we're gonna grab our retaining compound. We're gonna put a dab of retaining compound on the threads and we're gonna grab the actual mount. So now the mount here, we're gonna be using this first hole right there. That very first hole is the hole that we're gonna go into. So we're gonna go ahead and start this screw by hand. Try to keep the tensioner spring mounted in the little tabs because sometimes it can pop out and it makes it very difficult. So now we're gonna grab a two and a half millimeter driver and we are going to tighten this guy up. So you're gonna to torque this all the way down and you have to realize that this spring goes this way. So it's okay to be touched up against here. You can adjust and hold this as needed torque that guy down and check for tension. That feels pretty good. So let's now we're gonna go ahead and assemble the entire tensioner assembly as well as the idler pulleys. So we're gonna start with the left side first. So we're gonna lay the model on its side, on its right side, and we're gonna grab the actual belt tensioner side. So now your little tab here of your tensioner is going to ride into this little groove right here. So we're gonna go ahead and position this so it goes forward and it can ride into this little groove here. And we want to line up our holes here. So we want the tensioner side to go forward. And then we're gonna line up our holes. We're gonna grab a screw with our beauty ring. We're gonna throw the first screw in and start it by hand. We're gonna gr grab the second screw, start it by hand. 
grab our two and a half millimeter driver, go ahead and snug these screws up. Just don't drop the drivers like I did. And then you're gonna do the exact same on the other side. Now with all of our screws ran down, loctited, you're gonna flip the model onto the left side now where the right side of the helicopter is up. This is the back, this is the front. We're gonna grab our next tray our next rail, I should say, which is this guy. We want slanted edge to the front. The top and bottom is the same. You just want bolt holes towards the frame side. So we're gonna grab, we're gonna slide it in here. We're using one, two, and three. So we are going to start these bolts here. Screws with the beauty rings. There's gonna be four total on each side. One, two, three, and four. Go ahead and put your other two in, tighten those all the way up. The helicopter upside down and we are looking at the tensioner assembly. So now look at your idlers here. The raised side here goes towards the actual tensioner. So this side here that's up, that's raised to the tensioner, side here to the left. So this whole assembly is gonna go down into the second set of holes here. So we're gonna drop this guy down, lock tight on our screw, two and a half millimeter driver, and go ahead tighten this all the way up and you're going to do one on each side now once you got all your screws done and tightened go ahead and make sure that nothing is binding or rubbing everything is still free so now let's move on to the lower frame sides so our next step is going to be the lower frame side so i've already done one up here just so i can show you what we got going on so you're going to put your decal on now remember that you need a left and a right so this is going to be the right frame side or the left frame side i'm sorry if you're looking at it from the tail of the helicopter being over here left frame side right frame side so you're going to want to sticker them up accordingly now what you're going to do is of course clean these really good with rubbing alcohol you're going to grab these little double-sided tape and you're going to be going off of one two and three so three holes so it's going to look like this one two and three you're going to put these little metal spacers on with the beveled edge facing down flat side facing out and then you are going to insert this little lock nut into this area here and screw from the back side little one and a half millimeter driver with lock tight so now we're going to put the last little spacer remember beveled side down so we are going to just loosely set it down so we can line it up here we already took the double-sided sticky off, so we got our spacers done, our decal on. Now the last thing we need to do for this side before we can bolt it on the helicopter is grab this little assembly, and it's gonna go to this hole here. So the big part of the assembly is going to go into this hole, and then you're gonna flip it over. You are gonna use a one and a half millimeter driver with your countersunk little bit, Loctite on it, and carefully tighten down so it doesn't grab the decal and good to go go ahead grab your lower frame side this is going to be the left side you're going to grab your two and a half millimeter driver and your beauty washer no loctite because there's lock nuts and you are going to use the last this hole and this hole so you're going to go into this nut and this nut here you're just going to simply line everything up go ahead get it started do the exact same on this front one Go ahead, line it up, drop it into, into place, and then do the same on the other side. So now we're gonna move on to the skids. First thing we're gonna do is glue the skid caps into the tubes. So I use a little bit of medium CA, and I just basically go around the tube, a little bit of CA, and then I take my skid cap here and just simply push it in and rotate it holding a little pressure, have a paper towel handy just in case you have to wipe up any excess, and then you do the exact same on the other three. So now that we're done gluing our skid caps, we're gonna go ahead and install the actual mounts on the skids themselves. So we're gonna grab a two millimeter driver, lock tight our screw, and we're gonna look at this mount. We want the side with the lock nut to face in. So we're gonna use these two outside holes here, and we're just going to go from the inside, run our screw through here, get it started, and then screw it all the way down. Again, make sure your lock nut is on the inside of the mount, and then go ahead and you're going to do one on the other side and then the same on the other skid. 
So now that we got our skids assembled and we got our lower frame sides on, now it's time to mount the skids to the actual lower frame sides like this. So before you put your skid pipes in, I always mount the actual skids and then put the pipes in. Now, one thing to note, there is six of these screws. Four of them are going to be 12 millimeters, M3 by 12s, and two of them are going to be M3 by 14s. You want the M3 by 12s for what we're doing right now. So we're gonna grab our skid. Of course, you want it angled forward. And we are going to hold this into position. We're gonna go into that screw hole right there with the M3 by 12s. Go ahead and get it started by hand, two and a half millimeter driver. Go ahead and run that screw all the way down. And then do the exact same on the front skid, M3 by 12. We're gonna be going into this front hole right here. Sorry if you can't see that, we're gonna go into this front hole. Go ahead, line that guy up, hold it into place and run it down. And then do the screws on the other side. So one thing to note before screwing on your front skid is don't make the same mistake I did. You need to grab your front canopy mount and you're going to use the 12 millimeter long screw to go in the back hole here and you're going to use the 14 millimeter not 16 14 to the front screw hole here grab that 12 that just rolled away and that's going to go into this back hole here and then take your two and a half millimeter driver and tighten these screws all the way up now that we got the front carbon fiber plates on we need to install the canopy spacer slash front canopy mount so now if you look here, you're going to have a lock nut and then threaded. So you're going to be having a one and a half millimeter countersunk screw. And that's going to go into this little countersunk hole here. This front hole here is not going to be used right now, which is the screw. It's an M3 screw that goes into these lock nuts that's used at a later date. So what we're going to do now is we are going to lock tight our screw because it's not going into a lock nut and get this screw started. Now grab your next screw. Again, one and a half millimeter countersunk, Loctite, get it started. Now I'm going to hold this into position and eyeball it into place. If you want, you could run, get a M3 screw and use it as a spacer slash marker to help align. But I'm going to look at this as I tighten, keep it aligned and holding it into place and go ahead and lock this down and do the exact same on this side Hold it into place. You can see it. You can judge it. Lock it down. Now your front canopy spacer is done. So now we're going to go ahead and slide our skid pipes into place. So we're just going to slide them in. Get them into place where you want them. Do the exact same on the other side. Slide it in. Get it where you want it. And then you're going to roughly put these set screws in. Now these set screws can be a pain. And depending on your kit... If this was a original Rawl 700, your set screws will go in from the side. These are the newer style skids, so the set screws go in from the top. So just hold even pressure as you spin the set screw down and keep pressure as you are cutting threads. As you can see, it's cutting threads. So you're going to do that all four. And then what you're going to do is you're going to measure from the back here to a happy distance of where you want this skid pipe. So I tried to center the SAB heli division logo and then I take a measurement from the back to here do the same on both sides and then lock them all down and you get an even skid. so there you guys go part one I want to end this video off here I already know it's super long but I wanted to get it on its skids for this part of the video so in the second part we will continue on with motor ESC tail and just keep pushing on the build but the SAB raw 700 KSC edition is incredible of course torque servos like on all so I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like, subscribe, take care, and have a great day.